This is the John Wilding Castle Clock. Very pretty looking clock, ideal for the beginner. Nothing too complicated to make and it looks rather nice. Got some novel features like this maintaining gear. Uh, there's sufficient weight on there to keep the um, clock going while you wind it up. And uh, rather nice, an axe head. And this one, uh, uh, one on the hour striking. It's uh, very nice with its crenellations and uh, gothic windows. It's a very pretty clock. But, and there's always a but, there's just one thing wrong. The bloody thing doesn't go. It's got a problem. About 40 years ago I made three of these for my family. Two of them never went. One miraculously went for 27 years, so I might have done something slightly wrong. And then it wore off whatever it was that was keeping it going, and then it stopped. And this is that clock, and it won't go. We've tried everything. It's been in and out of my workshop for so many times I've lost count. I've had it to pieces hundreds of times and everything has been checked. I've even made modifications uh, in the ends of the the barrel there. I've put uh, ball races to in case there's too much friction because it's supposed to have a 10 pound weight on it. But that's it. It doesn't go. I've tried everything. Extra weight, less weight, heavier, lighter pendulum, stronger springs. But it all we stems down to this here. This gear, the main gear of 96 teeth, is not imparting its energy into that uh, lantern pinion there. So that's the problem. So what I've done is I've used some software to calculate what that should be. Just in case somebody, or John Wilding presumably, has made an error in the book. This is the gear generator program. So I'm able to check John Wilding's uh, measurements and see if we agree. I'm sure that when he did his calculations there weren't uh, all these free programs about. Anyway, I'll just change the units into millimetres because uh, that's how I've been working. And the tooth spacing is 2.34 And uh, number of teeth is 96. And in the second gear, the number of teeth the pins is 8. And I'll click on pin. And there you have it. It's given the pin diameter of 1. Uh, it's actually 1.04 if uh, you convert the imperial one he's suggested. Yeah. I don't know how much 0.04 it would make in the difference, I don't know. If I click on this open window, you've got all the information you need here, pitch diameter and all the rest of it. But now comes to the overall diameter here, which is 74.37. And that's the only thing that differs. Now, he says it's 2.91 inches. And that transcribes to 2.3, sorry, 2.93 inches. Now, whether that difference of 0 0.02 of an inch on the diameter of a nearly three inch size gear 
it's going to make much difference. I don't know. A fiftieth of an inch. So you've got a hundredth of an inch on the end of each tooth. It's a very small amount. It might make all the difference. I don't know. Anyway, that's the only difference I could find. <coughs> And rather than make a whole new gear, uh, what I've decided to do is to change the diameter of the pins and see if that helps. So if I go back to this one and change that, the pin diameter to um, 0.9, you don't see any difference in the program because it's not that sophisticated unfortunately instead of showing the same size tooth and a different gap between what it's done is it's actually modified the size, the shape of the tooth uh, which is not what you want um, and the action has been the same I can show you how ridiculous that could be how that is if I made that say 0.5 yeah, it changes it down to that, so that's not much use, I'm afraid. Anyway, that's what I've done. I've changed it to a smaller diameter pin on the pinion. Um, time will tell. This is the original pinion. Turned on the lathe and then drilled afterwards. The problem with drilling these is the drill is so fine that it's very easily deflected. If you use a short drill to drill the top holes, that's fine. But it's when you go through and you have to drill the ones in the base, uh, you're in an empty space and the drill is unsupported. And that's when the deflection can happen. So I decided I'd make it in three pieces and uh, see and see them and see what sort of result I can get. The see and see here has allowed me to do peck drilling which gives me a much more control over it and I've set the plunge rate into ridiculous 10 millimeters a minute so it's very slow Only I don't have many of these drills to throw away. The danger is always when you're drilling holes is when they break through in brass. It's the breakthrough that tends to make them snap. However, this is the base plate that's being drilled at the moment and they're not going right through. Oh, there goes the... When I examined the drill holes, you've got a burr on them. And that could mean one or two things. Either the drill is blunt, or this is soft brass. Ideally it should be half hard or hard. So, if this one breaks, I'm pretty sure it's going to be soft brass. Just to help it along, I'm going to use a puddle of cutting oil and hope that does the trick.
there's no burr this time, so I think maybe the cutting oil has done the trick. Still, six more holes to go. Unfortunately, I don't have a collet holder for such a small drill as this one. I've had to use this ordinary chuck, which is set reasonably accurately. It's the best I can do. Well, it cut all six, um, eight holes, and there's no burr on them, so that seems to have done the trick. So I'm just put some more cutting oil on, and this time this is just got to bore the centre out, and then cut it out. We'll see how good the glue is, the super glue. It's a three millimeter um, drill bit. Two flute, slot drill, I should say. It's a little bit faster plunge at 15 millimeters a minute, and feed rate is 60. got very small depths of cut in the hope that the glue holds. Spindle feed speed a bit faster. Better than that, you know. Well. This is the last 
last cut and it's leaving tabs, four tabs behind so that uh, it doesn't come flying off in the middle of it. You can just see the tabs, one in each quadrant. So now it's just a question of breaking it off there. These are the three parts that will make up the pinion. The base part is a press fit onto the core, and whereas the top piece is going to be looser, so that I can adjust it. When I put the pins through I'll be able to twist it until it's absolutely straight before I lock tight them together. Right, they're all in. Now all I have to do is cut the ends off and I'll do that with a Dremel, one of the little slitting, grinding wheel things. If I can just tip it up, you can see the residue of the green Loctite. And then it'll go in the lathe in a collet holder and I'll finish it off to size. Well, there it is, finished. And all the pins are nice and straight. Very pleased with that. Much better. I think from now on, if I ever have to make any more, that's the system I'll use.